Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So two days ago ArenaNet put out a blog uh, detailing in loose terms the way the new PvP game type coming to Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns uh, will work. Uh, this is Stronghold and the map in particular that's going to be released with the expansion, there will only be one map so far it would seem, is called uh, the Battle of Champions Dusk. So uh, as we have done an overview on a few of the other features of Heart of Thorns, now that we've got plenty of information on Stronghold, I thought I'd sit down and talk to you guys about it, especially considering today uh, Ready Up went live, this is ArenaNet's bi-weekly PvP oriented live stream. And this was the best ready up we've had in a long time. I think overall the show was fantastic. They answered lots of important questions. They gave us some sort of professional real footage of the new map. And um, a proper hands-on run through with Hugh Norfolk and Josh Davies. And they explained things very, very, very well. So, uh, I took some notes as I was going on. The footage in the background will be mostly Stronghold. Uh, if there are some gaps, there could be me playing some Power Necro. Um, let's talk about it. So essentially the idea of the new game type is while in Conquest you're fighting over an arbitrary uh, loose abstract number of points just simply getting to 500 instead on Stronghold the game ends when one team manages to kill the enemy Lord. So there are two bases on Champion's Dusk, you spawn in one, your opponent spawn in the other, and um, deep in your base behind multiple layers of defense is your Lord, and your goal is to push out into their base. Now they have stated that once this drops into game initially, it will be a part of the regular matchmaking system. Uh, currently, if you haven't PvP'd for a while, I actually think Guild Wars 2, honestly, I don't usually throw out superlatives like this, but I think Guild Wars 2 has probably the best voting system in any PvP game I've experienced experienced recently. Uh, you get to vote on a specific map, um, they will basically roll a dice, the more people who voted for uh, a certain map, uh, the higher chance that that map will be the one that's chosen. Currently we can match make into Conquest, but also Courtyard is available in game. Now Courtyard isn't actually a Conquest game type, it's just pure deathmatch. And so some of us were wondering was there going to be a different queue system, was uh, all the Stronghold stuff because it's such a different game type going to be separate from Conquest? And the answer is no. Uh, once the patch goes live, uh, the uh, Champions Dusk map will just appear as an option that you can vote for and if people want to play that instead of Battle of Kylo like they've been playing for two years they can vote for that and uh, you'll pretty much be playing on that map so uh, it's not exactly how I imagined they do it but it does seem pretty fair and because of this because that's then going into the way we currently queue with four other uh, team members the new map is going to be a 5v5 experience for now I've explained multiple times on my channel recently why I actually think 5v5 is a very strong format to choose, but they do say that once this comes out, if people go into custom arenas and play 8v8s and that everybody finds it's a much more dynamic and engaging game type at that higher number of players, then the standard could indeed change. Um, and so back to the goal of the game type, you want to kill the Guild Lord, but the Guild Lord is defended by numerous NPCs. The NPCs closest to him are very strong, elites, veterans a little bit further out, and then beyond that on the roadways, just regular enemies. Um, and also he is protected by two levels of defense. Um, an inner wall and an outer wall. So it's kind of like you're assaulting a keep in World vs. World. The difference here though is you as a player cannot actually do any damage to these gates or walls to break through them. You instead need to hire NPCs of your own to travel down lanes and do the damage to those walls for you. So there is a supply mechanic here. It's not just a straight bum rush into the enemy's keep. You need to gather supplies from a large supply depot area. Basically this is going to be the area that functions as the mid fights for the new game type. Uh, collecting supply here, you can have up to two supply on you at any time. If you kill an enemy player holding supply, you can actually steal that supply from them and go up to three supply. And you can take this back to your base and spend it on NPCs who will then help you get through these walls. There are two primary NPCs in Stronghold, as they've described, as you should be seeing in the footage here. One of these is called a door breaker. These are some friendly little squid dude that run along. They focus on nothing. They do not participate in any combat. They're incredibly squishy, but running up to doors and throwing bombs at them to chunk them down. So you're going to be trying to protect your little script door breakers while your enemies are going to be trying to kill them to defend themselves. At the same time as maybe they're defending, they're also on the other side of the map trying to push into your base. So there's going to be tons of different objectives flying around all at once on this one map. To compound upon this, there are also a trebuchet for either team. The trebuchets function a lot like they do in the Battle of Kylo, in that if you get hit with a treb, you take massive damage and huge knockback 
attack. Both trebuchets can hit the middle area where all of the supply is located. The developers did say that supply in Stronghold is essentially the lifeblood of the game type. So you can imagine a lot of fights will be occurring here. And that means Treb's going to be quite powerful, having to dodge roll this and really focus on it. Uh, Kylo, for many people, and certainly for me, I feel is one of my favorite conquest maps just because of the Treb mechanic. And it is here in full force. So once again, there's even more splitting you may like to do to try and carry yourself to victory. Do you want to dedicate someone to the Treb so you can lock down that supply area and hopefully starve the enemy team out? Uh, trebuchets can be broken, just like in the Battle of Kylo 2. And to repair a trebuchet, once again, you're going to be using this supply mechanic. If you can't get any supply to it, apparently they do say it will respawn after a short while. But um, that's what Trebs are designed for on this map, for player harassment and controlling that central area largely. Though you should be able to still be able to snipe people on roads and you can use it to snipe enemy creep, perhaps assaulting your base. If you hit them right, you're just going to clear a whole wave of them straight away. This is a very powerful function of the map, but it is not directly being used to break walls, which was a bit of a surprise to me. You think, oh, Trebuchet, this is Siege. Obviously, this is going to be about wall destruction, but no. So um, that's another mechanic at play here. We have the door breakers, who are the scripts, um, and then we also have archers who can be hired. The archers on this footage look like Tengu. I don't know whether they're all going to be Tengu, but that was pretty bad as to see. Um, these guys will patrol along with the door breakers, and these guys are designed to take out enemy NPCs, so they can help protect your door breakers. Archers will do a little bit of damage to enemy gates as well, but not so much that it's really significant. See, the idea is that uh, when you first start a map on this game, type, there's going to be NPCs all over the place. There's going to be a bunch of NPCs defending the Lord, and then there's going to be NPCs stationed along the roads and at the inner and the outer wall. Um, and it's your job as a team to clear those out, because otherwise they're going to be killing your door breakers. Once they die, they do not respawn. So this is very much one of those ideas where you as a team could make a mass massive push to try and kill the enemy Lord, but fail and wipe. But it doesn't quite matter that you failed and wiped, because maybe you killed a bunch of NPCs while you were there, and now maybe they're really open for a strike, and, and you could win the next Next time you do it. So that's kind of the way that supply works on the map. They did clarify a lot of things to us as well on this live stream. I was very happy to hear about, like the stuff to do with queuing. But um, the idea of this game, if it sounds very MOBA ish, then absolutely they've pretty much held their hands up and said yes this is kind of very moverish. Um, however in terms of how long the games are supposed to play out they want it consistent with the current conquest maps and I think this is quite smart especially if it's all going to be queuing in together. I wouldn't want a situation where Stronghold is the better game type but because re because the games last so much longer and rewards there's not so much incentive there people kind of neglect it and instead stick about in conquest just because it's affecting their progression in random unrelated PvE stuff more. So they have said that about the same length of time it takes you to play a Battle of Conquest is about the same amount of time it will take you to play this game type 2 and overall I do think that uh, that's pretty much a fine length of time for tournaments and stuff. Best out of 3, best out of 5, they don't tend to last too long unlike you know how you can see with League for example. Um, they also discussed on the MOBA topic some other uh, ideas and principles they toyed with while developing the game type. They talked about how Essentially on the map, we're going to have two lanes. You're going to have a lane that your troops push down and try and get into the enemy base. And then there's a different lane where your enemy's troops are pushing in. So you as a team, you're deciding, all right, who's helping us assault? Who's helping defend our walls kind of thing, right? But they're two separate lanes and they just only move in one direction. Other games, you think about League of Legends, other MOBAs, you'll see that there's like a tug of war going on within these lanes. There are creep hitting each other in the middle and there's a real push-pull. Um, now ArenaNet did talk about that a little bit, they said, and I think Hugh Norfolk explained incredibly well why this didn't work very well for Conquest. Chief among the reasons he gave was the fact that, unlike MOBAs, there's no like buying system here. There's no farming gold, there's none of that stuff. Um, you have the build that you chose when you went in and there's, there's like no laning phase necessarily like that. That's all been eliminated and for that reason, it just kind of wasn't necessary for this map and I do uh, agree with the reasoning. So a further mechanic, I've already discussed a few um, that will be going on with this map is the idea of heroes. Now they explain that heroes are like super weapons. Um, every now and then on the map, uh, in a, a couple of specific areas, um, the uh, power of the mists will congeal somewhere, and if a player were to travel to this location and press F because they see it marked on their map, they say you get about a 30 second window where the game says to you, hey look, something's about to happen, get ready for it. Uh, both teams can fight over this location, but if someone manages to channel at it uninterrupted, a lot like the way that the channels work on Temple of the Silent Storm right now, you'll actually summon a hero ally for your team, and this... Uh, 
uh, is a really powerful NPC who, if you stand next to them, they give you massive damage reduction. They don't just give you flat damage reduction, uh, but they reduce all incoming damage by 50% and the duration of incoming conditions by 50%. So it covers both bases there, and it will do this uh, not just to you, but I believe also to your NPC allies as well. And this hero will travel along your lane to whatever objective you're currently assaulting. Are you still on the outer wall? Then he'll start damaging the outer wall. If, uh, if you're on the inner wall, then he'll go there. If he gets all the way into the Lord Room, if you summon a hero right towards the end when so much damage has already been done, uh, they actually have a special nuke ability that is an awful lot like uh, Book 5 for the Guardian. I remember seeing this actually in one of the trailers and thinking it was a Guardian using it, but perhaps it was a hero. Um, but they'll use uh, a massive AoE knockdown that hits every single NPC and potentially as well, I haven't seen confirmation on it, but all players in the area too, defending players, and it also chunks everything for 25% of its health. Now, that's quite significant because uh, it looks to me, uh, again, uh, I'm not 100% sure whether this is confirmed, but that the enemy guild lord does not actually regenerate health. So this attrissive nature, unless you have a player who is actually sick of that and healing them up, uh, you're, the guild lord losing so much health suddenly, especially if he was already a little bit weaker, could be a huge thing. They seem to have paid a lot of attention to sort of this end clause of the game, you know, these last intense moments. They've tried very hard, uh, as they stated in the blog post, to try and make this very spectator friendly and add these big swings so one thing that will happen with this guild lord as opposed to the guild lord uh, we're all used to on foe fire legacy of the foe fire is this uh, enemy when it goes down the objective is to kill him but when he goes down he actually has a down state this is an npc with a down state the other npcs don't have this they just get tankier and more difficult to kill the deeper into the base you push but this guy has a down state now on the live stream they did show some attempts at taking the lord out solo he was trying to do it on his own it looked incredibly difficult these are big team pushes that you're ultimately after gonna you know go all in all or nothing for kind of thing um and once you manage to push the uh, guild lord down he'll actually be down there it looks even and again they didn't confirm but the fact that they've added this downstate add, actually adds huge swings and play to this final fight because if the uh, guild lord has like tagged you and you get defeated while he was downstate there's actually the possibility for a guild lord to rally and that is going to be a huge, huge part of the game. I'm very curious to see how that plays out. It means that even if your guild lord is incredibly low and everything feels futile as it sometimes does at Legacy, um, you can still swing it back by securing that kill. Uh, potentially, you know, even raise him up. They didn't discuss this idea. But by adding that there, it means that if from the very start to the very end, uh, they're really building up a lot of tension. This isn't something that they stressed very much on the live stream, but I can really see through the way they have designed this that um, the ending moments of many of these games, especially in big tournaments if they end up happening, you know, high profile games, these are going to be some exciting moments as uh, as the games come to their conclusion. Um, because you can think about the idea that there could be some huge fight going for a lord on one end of the map, and at the exact same time, maybe some people are rushing the other people's lords too, and you're sort of fighting for that last moment. A lot of people will say that Legacy of the Foe Fire is one of the most fun maps to spectate, just because of these huge chances for massive swings, and that is, this is a, this is a game type built on that. Uh, it seems they've been very smart about a lot of things that I've noticed. Um, for example, uh, players cannot rally on NPCs that are around the map. They, um, from the top level, have tried to design it very much so that even though there's a lot of NPC action going on with this game type. They are all a lot weaker as units than you, the players are. The idea is that this is a PvP game type, right? The, the excitement and the thrill of the game is really about fighting one another and how you interact with the game type. It's not supposed to be PV door, right? This isn't supposed to be small scale world versus world where we're just hammering on walls constantly or we're fight spending more time fighting NPCs. So, you know, NPCs will die quickly. You act as a very powerful unit on the field, but they do all have very specific roles and have their parts to play. And uh, that seems very smart to me. I like that from that very high level, they have made it so that uh, we're still the important parts about the game. It will be the roamers picking off, you know, what they're calling the smugglers uh, that's most interesting. Um, so in this video, I don't want to talk too much more or speculate about where I think uh, this game type could go because you could talk for ages about it. Indeed, uh, in the link down below, you guys can find the blog post they released and you, they try and throw out, you know, some ideas of new roles and things we'll see. Uh, they discussed on the live stream that, you know, like perma stealth thieves don't really mean anything in Conquest because that just decaps nodes and frankly I like that because stealth is not a fun mechanic to me at all 
But they did talk about the fact that, you know, now that we have this new game type, there are so many more options available. You can create a thief that continuously stealths a door breaker, scrit, until he's right up on the enemy's, um, you know, gate and then starts smashing it down, for example. Uh, on the blog post, they say, look at all these different roles that we've seen emerge. The idea of assaulters, who are people who are trying to clear out enemy players and prebs and take out NPCs. They talk about smugglers, who are people who specifically deal with getting supply and spending supply, an awful lot like flag runners from the original GVG. Uh, they talked about shepherds who are people that are basically going to be escorting a lot of the NPCs and you're going to see like serious healer roles and things coming in having actual use. The idea of defenders who don't really focus on the offensive lane but focus on the defensive lane and you know are trying to pick off enemy shepherds. Uh, they talked about treb masters. You could have someone who spends a lot of time on treb. You can have just a straight up roamer who's like a jack of all trades or someone who just spent, literally spends the entire time just trying to kill and harass non-stop, uh, you know, the Slayer. Um, these are just kind of Arena Net's flavorful ideas of what the roles could be, but really thinking about the game type, it could mean a lot. It could mean that Guild Wars 2's already struck a really, really nice balance with its skill system, and um, people will be able to d try all kinds of new builds and actually have viable stuff to play. I can think of so many things on my Ellie that have never really worked too well before, but now... Oh my god, now there's a, there's a whole bunch of traits and things that I may actually start running, and that's very exciting to me. So, uh, we'll probably talk about that more later. There's lots of stuff we can speculate on too. Like the fact that Shirai Osa is one of the heroes. I think these are just going to be small nods more than anything. But um, that could be for more of a general video later. Here I just kind of wanted to explain to you guys what Stronghold is. And uh, why I really think I am quite excited about it. This could be something that really brings me back into PvP. And I'm curious about, you know, how 8v8s and stuff go. Uh, it's actually one of my most anticipated features now for Heart of Thorns. Because there is nothing glaringly obvious that I can see whatsoever with the map. Maybe you guys can leave me a little bit of feedback back on that down in the comments below but that's pretty much it that's what we learned today uh, i'm gonna be getting back on top of a lot of news there was announcements about the personal story being restored and stuff probably be uh, talking to you guys about that tomorrow thanks very much for watching guys hope you're having a great time and i'll uh, i'll see you then